Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this one. I hope you guys are well. Today we're going to take a quick look at some of the composer commands that you may run into on a daily basis, depending on what you're doing. So if you type in composer, it pulls up the available commands for you. And we're going to go over a bunch of these ones. And some of them are a lot of duplication and they kind of do the same thing. And we'll touch on those real quick. So also to the right here, I just have a version of PHP Storm IDE open just to kind of show you um, where the composer file is and what you're actually affecting in a project. All right, so with that, I'm just gonna clear this for now. I'm going to fire up a new Laravel project. So I'm gonna call it Laravel new demo. And it's just gonna build up a demo project of Laravel. Okay, once this is done, I will clear. I will CD into demo, okay? And then I'm just gonna open up that project over here on the right. Okay, so once this project over here is open, we can see that we have a basic Laravel project, some defaults, and right here, we have this file over here called the composer.json file. And within this file, we have a list of required dependencies and things that are needed in order for this Laravel framework to run smoothly. And over here to the left, I'm gonna type in composer. So the first command is pretty straightforward. If you type in composer about, you end up seeing what composer is about, what version you have, and a quick de description of what composer is and uh, things about its library. Um, the next one, archive, I don't really use too much. I'm not gonna get into that one. Um, it creates an archive of this uh, composer package. So browse opens up a package repository's URL or homepage in the browser. So let's say we wanted to take a look at something like this, like Laravel slash framework. If we wanted to see the URL or repository, we would type in uh, composer, browse, then the package or something that we'd like to browse. So in this case, I wanna browse uh, the Laravel framework, and it'll open that up in a browser, and that's what that command does. It takes you to the repo or repository where that thing lives, and you can browse a package. Uh, sometimes packages have, you know, install instructions or special things that you may need to follow or requirements, and it may be good to check that out. Next up is uh, CC or clear cache. Um, there are kind of three commands behind this one. So there's the CC, there's the clear cache, and then there's the clear dash cache. If you read the description to the right, you can see that it clears Composer's internal package cache, and this one does the same thing. So if you ever wanna check what that is, you can just type in another command, which is Composer, and we're gonna say help CC. And then it kinda of walks you through what this command is about. And as you can see, the clear cache deletes all cache packages from Composer's cache directory. This would be the same as saying Composer, and we say help, and then we type in clear cache. And once again, you notice that the output is identical, it's the same. We can run this command by typing in Composer CC clear cache, or that clear dash cache with the hyphen, and you get the same results. So right now we ran this command, and what it did was it cleared any cache things that were inside my directory. So let's clear this. Next one up is to check the platform requirements. So this will go through a list of requirements that are needed to be satisfied for our project. So we could type this in and see what it looks like. So we can say composer check platform rex, and it'll tell you whether uh, there is a success message or a failure message regarding those packages. So some of the things that we do need are PHP, some of these extensions over here, and it runs through and gives any recommendations or warning. So that will clear this one more time, bring up Composer. So this sets the config options for Composer. So you could do something like say Composer config, and then you could say, you know, dash dash list. And then you can see um, some of the configurations or list the configurations within that list. So there's a lot of options around that. I think there's like auth, unset, um, you know, and then the global configuration. So, so let's just clear this right now and we'll run Composer again. And the next thing in the list is create project. So this creates a new project from a package to a given directory. So if you met, if you noticed before, we kind of created a Laravel project by using Laravel new and then naming the project. In this case, I named it demo. So if you were gonna use the composer route, you could say uh, composer, and then you can use the create project. And then the thing that we're gonna create is a Laravel project. So it'd be Laravel slash Laravel. I like the Laravel new because it's a little bit quicker. It's not, you know, as verbose or long and you can just do the same thing. So that's where that would come in. And it doesn't have to be a Laravel project. It'd be some other thing that Composer could create. So depending on what the command is for that application or that process, you can run this command. So depends. I actually don't really use this one a lot. I can run it just to show you guys what's up. So if we say Composer depends, 
and you have to provide something that it depends on like a package so you can try to install a package and you can say well okay does this package depend on this package or do i need any dependencies and i think this is where this command comes into play um, diagnose your system to divide to identify any common errors if you were to type in composer and just type in diagnose it'll do a check and go over your system and check for public and private keys in your fingerprints and make sure that everything is up and running you could also run a command called composer validate and that would also check to see if the composer file is valid um, those come up from time to time but i rarely have to reach for those ones there this one has two commands which are exactly the same so there's like dump dash auto load and then dump auto load so what it does is it dumps the auto loader inside of the project so if you're having issues with something not working correctly um, you could clear the cache or you could dump the auto loader it really just goes through and it regenerates a list of all of the things that the project needs in order to get it working so you can get a list of all the classes to be included in the project and the composer dump auto load function will help you trying to resolve that execute i will skip for now we don't really execute vendor binary scripts this one is interesting composer fund um, you know these guys work really hard in trying to build out this tool if you type in composer.fund it'll go through and it will list all the projects or the things that you've required inside the composer.json file and it will tell you um you know that these guys are looking for support so it says please consider following these links and sponsoring a work package or the authors um i do sponsor some authors because i think the work that they do is just remarkable so um you know if you find something that you're using and you want to support it this tells you how to reach those links and what to do and become a sponsor or help sponsor these programs okay so we'll type in composer we've already taken a look at global before installing composer globally um, help you've seen me just do when i type in a command like composer help the name of the command it'll help you work through the command and what you need to do or what it does uh, the next thing up would be say like composer home and that will open up the browser to the home application of your project that's currently using the composer file so in this case it's laravel that's kind of the same thing as typing out browse and then the package so if we type in browse like we did before and we check out the package we can see that um, over here it's kind of the same thing so composer home will bring this up or composer browse allows you to browse a specific package that you've installed or uh, a specific thing that you require i'm going to skip over i for now because it's kind of self-evident here so like if you wanted some information about a package you could be like composer info and then you could type in the package this command brings up the name of the package the version any licenses or things around that the home page any attributes and things that you want to know about the package how it's all loaded the psr version that it's using uh, any requirements that are needed for this project any dev requirement any suggestions that the package actually suggests the command composer suggests right so then it does the same thing kind of suggests some things that the package is looking for if you were to type in composer license uh, kind of the same idea it goes over each package and tells you what their licenses are so if you wanted to maybe you know uh, grab a package and look at it and maybe uh, fork it and work on it or do something you can see the license and the requirements that are required to do so or whether you can do so and it is a very interesting one and i'm going to make a directory i'm going to call it um let's see let's just call it demo 2 and then we'll cd into demo 2 and then if i type in composer init you'll see that it welcomes to the composer config generator maybe you have composer but you're not inside of a laravel project you're using something else and you require composer if you were to create your own package you could touch and then you know uh, create this composer.json file as you will see inside of this project over here we added a folder called demo2 and we're just going to go inside here and we're going to generate a composer file so the package name is going to be called this i'm just going to walk through the defaults and it will generate the file for us now this is like i rushed through this but there's a lot you can do and a lot of configuration that you can do here and when you go into the demo folder over here you'll see that it generated a bunch of things that we need so some vendor directories you have the composer you have the auto load file that you would run composer auto load with you have the sources directory and then you have your composer.json file this is one way to generate the composer.json file okay the next one is install so if you were to type in composer stall i won't do that here 
If you pull down a project from a repo and you don't have all the dependencies, all the things that you need to run the project, if you run composer install, it will pull all those requirements in, install that, and set up your project from the composer lock file if it's present. If not, it will generate the composer lock file for you after it's pulled in all the requirements. Okay, next up, we've already talked about licensing. List is pretty much the same as I'm doing here. So when I type in composer, it's no different than typing in composer list. So that does the same thing. So I just type in composer outdated and that will run. And what it'll do is it'll check to see if there's any packages that have updates available or are outdated. Uh, prohibits, I don't actually use this one a lot. Um, just shows what packages prevent a given package from being installed. So that case I rarely run into depending on what I'm doing. Remove and require and reinstall. You'll probably use these a lot. So let's say we wanted to um, use say composer and we're gonna use the search command. I don't know, let's say a uh, cookie consent uh, thing here. You could look and see if that's available and it'll tell you the ones that are abandoned, very visible, you can see this. And then if you wanted that package, you can type in composer and you can require and then whatever one it is. So I'm gonna choose this one and I'm just gonna paste it in down here and it will pull those in and install that and get that set up. And then as you can see in your composer file or composer.json, it'll add the latest and that version. Let's say I made a mistake and I didn't want this here. I would use the next command in the line, which is composer remove. And I'm going to remove the package that I just installed and it will remove it from your JSON file and your lock file. If you type in reinstall, it'll do the same thing. It'll say pattern does not match the currently installed packages, no packages found. So in order to reinstall a package, or uninstall it and reinstall it, the package must be installed or required first. So we'll require the package one more time. We will go to the command and we will reinstall it. It'll uninstall it and then it will reinstall the package. Um, that's pretty much down the list. I won't go over run and script. Search we've kind of covered. Show pretty much shows information about the package. The next one is self update. So there is a composer.far file and you can see whether you're on the latest version of Composer. So you say Composer and you type in the command self update or self dash update, the alias, it still works. It says I'm already on the latest version of Composer and I'm on the stable channel, so everything is good. I'm caught up to the latest one. Upgrade and update, kind of the same. They're all the same like you. So if you were to type in Composer U, this would run through and you look at your repositories and it would upgrade all packages that it found an update for. So no published resources for tags, Laravel assets in this case, publishing complete. That is the same as saying update. So if I want a composer update, I should get the same results. It discovers the packages and there are no updates. And then the last one would be, whoops, I can't type composer. Bad type date today, guys. Composer upgrade and it does the same thing. There are some kind of caveats and you know flags that are slightly different for each one, but in general, they kind of do the same thing. So that's it. I know that was pretty long video guys and I just wanted to get you familiar with some of the things that you'll reach for when a project doesn't work or you need to clear the cache or you need to browse a package or see what something's about or you want to provide support by funding a package or a group of people that make packages. I know we did it at a very high level, but I hope you learned something new and you get a little more comfortable with Composer. From time to time, we will be using these commands to pull in things and to troubleshoot and figure out uh, what's going on within our projects. Take care and I'll see you next time.